Scott from Renegade. I had the most unique opportunity to be among what I would consider to be radiator greatness and to be standing next to David from PowerPool. How are you? Hey Scott, how are you doing today? Oh, I am doing just great. I'm so, so, so happy to be here. So first of all, David, how long have you guys been in business building radiators? And I know that it's kind of gone through some iterations, but you've been doing this a long time. Well, Scott, yes, we've been at it for a long time, a little over 30 years, um, with a few different companies over the years who have done some great success and some great uh, great experience along the way. Um, Joe, my shop manager, he's been at it for at least 20 plus. Mm -hmm. um, some of our staff members haven't quite been here as long, but the things that we do and the knowledge we have, it's, it's not something we did overnight. Speaking of up to speed, I understand you've been doing some racing too. Yeah, so over the years we've uh, We've been doing some racing. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to race a long time, really. Uh, from the time I was five to uh, 30, from quarter midgets, go-karts, sprint cars, midgets. It was a great experience racing. It also gives you the, the pride of going, I know what I need for my own car, so I want to do it for your car. Um, again, a lot of our staff has some racing experience, and having that knowledge and that drive of being competitive, uh, but fair, really has pushed the company a long way. That's interesting because he says competitive but fair, meaning you're very much a moralistic company. That's one of the things that I like is because of the fact that there's a lot of false promises out there. But these guys, they really back up what they say and the promises of what they're going to deliver to you with a tremendous amount of engineering and a whole lot of really, really great success with, the, with their designs. They've got techs doing this all the time, doing all the all the real cool welds, the stuff that I'm so jealous of, but uh, there's some really, really good stuff going on back there. One of my most favorite things that I've learned through the years, and I really want it to, to, to be explained to me by the guy that knows it best, is the efficiency of cores and why some cores, which come from some pretty major, very reputable manufacturers, don't perform like yours do. Show me. The biggest difference between our radiator cores and a lot of our competitors is the, the efficiency of the, the core design itself being the different spacing of the fin and tube versus the competitor. You can see that ours is a little bit of a shorter fin which gives you a, a stronger fin and also gives you more tubes that flow water in the same square area of radiator that you're using no matter what size it is whether it's for a, a go-kart right. or for a semi. So more service area. More service area. A more flow rate, uh, less restrictive, yeah. things that really add up to your entire water system. Uh, and also it gives you a better opportunity where your dissipation is. Because really where the fin and the tube touch is where your major point of dissipation is in a radiator. So the more fin you have to a degree, you don't want to get too dense, but the more fin, more tube you have, you're going to have more opportunity to be more efficient dissipating heat than you are in a traditional core with a little bit taller fin and spread out a little bit further. So in a nutshell, what you're trying to say, this being your core, there's more water going this direction, coolant. There's more fins because it's denser in between, yet the passage of air that goes through sees more surface area, which becomes more efficient than less coolant going through the passages, more distance between the fins, and less fins per square inch which is considerably less surface area. That's a very good summary, Scott. All right, well that's good. See, I'm already learning. <laughs> this is great. But there's something else that I've often not been able to understand. Most aluminum radiators from the big major manufacturers last five, six years at the most, whatever. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one of your radiators fail. I have never seen one fail. Not to say that it's not gonna happen. And leave it to me, I'll crash a car someday and I'll definitely destroy one, but I believe there's something that you hinted around before that has to do with where the coolant comes into the radiator, which is magic that you guys have definitely figured out. Yes, yeah, Scott, we've, uh, we definitely have come across some interesting information over the years of testing and, and real world experience and things that have contributed to failures and success across the board. With a typical radiator, you have an inlet and outlet, regardless of where they're placed, and you have hot water and cold water coming in and out. A radiator in general, as it gets warmer, it expands and then contracts and expands and contracts. But when you bring those elements of expansion and contraction in at a very high rate, the aluminum can't react enough, so you end up pulling tubes and headers apart in this area of a typical radiator. Um, as you see, you, know, you have a fin 
on the radiator, you have the tube goes through the header, and this is a brazed joint. No matter who the radiator is made by, that's a brazed joint. And if that brazed joint is not engineered and done properly, when you're pulling and pushing on this enough times, eventually you become a weak joint and it actually just starts leaking right there at the joint and shows up down here in the radiator, typically in the corners of the radiator where the inlet and outlet are. No kidding. And that's basically rapid expansion and contraction becoming the paperclip effect where it's going to continuously Correct. go, go, go until it finally breaks. Yes. Wow. That is amazing. So, without giving up too much proprietary information, how did you beat that? Because yours don't fail. They don't fail. Engineers are quite a bit smarter than us in some respects. <laughs> uh, you know, and we, we came across some things that allow that joint to expand and contract with a little bit of additional support along with the way the cores are constructed and some things that we do when we take this core and we start working on it and prepping it for aluminum tanks, we actually go ahead and do a few steps that not everybody does that helps make that radiator a little bit more robust and able to have the longevity of lasting longer because it's not as fragile. Okay, so the secret sauce is basically you build it better. We build it better through our experience and our hard work and the things we've learned over the years. It's like building a better mousetrap. Yes, <laughs> that's funny because that would have been something I would have said, that's for sure. I'm going to show you around. So we're going to spend just a couple minutes really quick. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this plant that he has here. We are happen to be in uh, the racing hub of America. We're in Indianapolis. The speedway is like right down the street, no kidding. So the wells all occur back in here on the radiators. You can see up on the wall, there's the design sheet that's right back there. And she's actually laying a really, really nice bead, making sure that everything is gonna be perfect, be structurally very strong. And then once the whole radiator is done, it goes to quality control. He's our shop manager. He's in charge of everything out in the shop from the time we pull the sheet metal out of the rack to the shift out the door. Right now, Joe's going to explain to you how we pressure check each and every radiator that we build to ensure we have no leaks in our product when it ships out the door. Basically, we'll go through, make sure all our fittings that are on the drawing match what's actually built on the radiator. We have all these different caps and plugs that we'll put into them, leak check, to cap it off. And then we have a couple little quick disconnects here for leak checking. We'll pressurize the radiator to a certain PSI, stick it down in the water, and look for bubbles. And you kind of have to go over every little nook and cranny that we think it's been welded at. You kind of move it around, look around, and you just get to one side and let all, some of the water run out so you're not blowing it all over the place. Same thing on the other side. Look around in all your nooks and crannies. Make sure you don't see any bubbles. If you see any bubbles, then you gotta go back to the welder and have it fix the leak. After that, after you get most of the water to run back out of it, we have this air drying system here that will take all the air out, or all the water out of it with air, just to uh, ensure that when we go over to shipping with it, there's no water in the packaging. We'll let them sit for a day to let it cool out or dry out, just so there's no water or anything in any of the cardboard in the box or whatnot. And just with aluminum, the biggest thing is when it's wet, it starts to oxidize quick. So you get all the water off as much as possible so when the customer gets it, it's ready to go in the package and look brand new. Well, this is Scott from Renegade Hybrids. And I'm telling you, being here and being among the professionals here at PowerCool, I, this is such, a, such an honor. And